When thinking about e-mobility, what is the biggest pain point you see right now? It's charging, isn't it, for most of you? And that's why our next impulse is about that. The need for speed, the future of charging in e-mobility. Please welcome on stage Alexander Junge, member of the executive board of Aral AG and general manager of VP Pulse Central Europe. Good morning, everybody. Very pleased to be here today and would like to talk about the future of EV charging, so the need for speed. One second. Okay, high tech seems to be working. So, as you can see, um, and I would like to use Germany as an example here, but uh, most of what I'm going to say is applicable to other countries as well. As you can see, the battery electric vehicle park is growing strongly. And um, currently, we are at like 14-15% uh, market share of all newly registered vehicles. So about one in seven vehicles which uh, get registered now um, are fully electrical. And we assume that until the year 2030, this market share will climb to somewhere between 40 and 50 percent fully electrical vehicles. And uh, that will, of course, translate into quite a substantial electrical vehicle park on Germany's roads. Uh, we assume it will be about 10 million fully electrical vehicles um, in the year 2030. And then you add a few more um, plug-in hybrid electrical vehicles to it, and you get to the order of magnitude of 15 million, which is the target of the German government for the year 2030. Now, what does that mean for EV charging? And uh, I've brought a few photos here from China. Uh, we also offer electrical vehicle charging in China. and. In China, we are observing queues. There are so many electric vehicles on the road already that uh, the deployment of charging infrastructure couldn't um, keep up with the growth of the EV car park. And we are observing quite often that uh, vehicles are queuing in front of uh, chargers. And given that China is a few years ahead of Germany, uh, in terms of electrical vehicle deployment, we have thought about whether the same is likely to happen in Germany. And actually, as a company, we want to help Germany to prevent this from happening. We want electrical vehicle drivers to be able to find a charge point whenever they need one, wherever they need it, and without having to queue in front of it. And um, there are two factors which will contribute to reaching that target. On the one hand, it is uh, obviously to deploy a sufficiently large number of charge points. But on the other hand, it is also to offer uh, sufficient charge speed. And offering a sufficient charge speed does not only mean that drivers are able to vacate the charge point faster, hence it will contribute to avoiding queues in front of charge points. Now, it will also mean that uh, people will feel comfortable to switch over from vehicles with internal combustion engines to vehicles uh, with electrical engines. We believe that only if we can offer people a charge time uh, which is about as short as the time required for fueling the vehicle now, going into the convenience store, paying for fueling, etc. Only if that is about the same, the people um, will really pivot over in masses to electrical vehicles. Before we reach that point, it will rather be early adopters and enthusiasts. 
And uh, we have actually done a few um, customer surveys, and 77% of all customers explained to us how important ultra-fast charging is to them for their decision to buy electrical vehicles. And another 52% said um, that flexibility and uh, the ability to charge spontaneously um, are also important factors to them which make ultra-fast charging attractive and important to them. And we are deploying chargers currently with charge speeds of up to 350 kilowatt. Now, most cars can't do that. Um, Porsche Taycan can do up to 270 kilowatts, if I'm uh, informed correctly. I've also heard that there will be faster charging versions of that car soon. There are some cars who can do up to 250 kilowatt, but most cars at the moment can do, say, up to 150 kilowatt, but not 300 or 350 kilowatt. So why are we deploying that? Because we are talking to car makers, and from that we know the direction of travel. And the direction of travel is very clearly that vehicles are going to be able to charge faster and faster. And probably in a few years' time, the charge speed which our chargers can offer already now uh, will be used by the vehicles on the road then. So in other words, we are building our chargers for the future. And uh, if you charge at a charge speed of 350 kilowatt, if the car permits that, um, then you can easily charge enough electricity to drive another 350 kilometers with what you've charged in just 10 minutes. And currently, fueling at our fuel stations, including paying in the convenience store, takes seven to eight minutes. In case of charging, you save the way into the convenience store, you save the time to potentially queue there for a little while and pay, etc., because it's all being done electronically or by swiping your credit card at the pump. By the way, all our chargers in Germany already offer that. You, charge, uh, you swipe your credit card or you swipe your German bank card, the uh, EC card, and you can pay directly at the charger. So 10 minutes charge time compares to seven to eight minutes time for fueling and paying. And that is then around about the same amount of time required. And as I said, that will be really important for the breakthrough of e-mobility. And that is why we are very proud to offer that to our customers already now. And our aim is to provide the fastest, most convenient, and most reliable and integrated end-to-end -end charging experience. Wow, what a complex sentence. I'm going to explain to you what that actually means. Fastest, I've just talked about the need for speed. I've talked about how fast the chargers are we deploy, so that's hopefully clear. Most convenient. Convenient means two things here. Number one, the charging experience as such must be convenient. So we offer plug and charge everywhere. If you register for it, you just arrive at the charger, you plug in, and it starts charging. No need to swipe a card, no need to use an app to start the charging process or whatever. Plug in, that's it. And you've registered for it, you've registered your credit card, so the charger recognizes the vehicle, recognizes the owner, and says, oh yeah, I've got a credit card registered, great. I permit the charging process to start. And then, when you want to finish charging, you plug off and you drive off. It's as easy as that. And the charger automatically builds your credit card or EC card, a bank card, whatever it is. So, most convenient in terms of the charging experience as such, and plug and charge is just one of many examples. But most convenient also in terms of the Location. Many of our competitors offer charging and charging and charging. 
but nothing else. We make sure we offer charging at locations where we've got a convenience store, where we've got a toilet. We have begun to build canopies over chargers, like this beautiful one from Isselburg on the German highway A3 next to the Dutch border. And we train the people in our convenience stores. So we want to make the overall experience really convenient for the customer. And I will come back to that. We've run customer service, highly interesting. And then integrated end-to-end -end experience. What does that mean? There are many points which underpin that, but just one example. Imagine you're running a small business with a small vehicle or fleets. You're a plumber and you've got a number of employees and five company vehicles. Or you're Amazon and you run a few thousand vehicles. Whichever kind of business it is, we've got the right solution. First of all, we understand that most fleets will be mixed fleets over the next seven, eight years. Why? Either because the fleet operator doesn't want to pivot over in one go to electric vehicles, and is rather careful and says, let's try it out. Let's try out how that goes with those electrical vehicles. And if it goes well, we will pivot over from vehicles with combustion engines to electrical vehicles. Or the fleet operator would even have the willingness to pivot over in one go, but then has several vehicles in the fleet each of them as an individual leasing contract, and each of those lease agreements expires at an individual date. So be the reason that the fleet operator doesn't want to pivot over in one go or cannot do it in one go, but for whatever reason, the reality of most fleets in this country will be to be a mixed fleet in the next seven or eight years. And with our fuel and charge card, we offer the fleet customer a solution which enables them to pay all fuelings and all charging, charging events with one card. And the fleet manager gets one monthly invoice and can then drill into the details or not, depending on preference. So that is really integrated, but we integrate it even further. For the same fleet, we offer fleet depot charging solutions. We offer to install them and sell to them chargers at their depot, at their office building, at the homes of the drivers of fleet vehicles if they want to charge overnight. And we offer automated reimbursement because if a fleet driver charges at home, obviously that fleet driver doesn't want to have two power suppliers and two meters at the house. So there's one power supplier which supplies all electricity needs of the household, including the vehicle, and then the driver wants to get reimbursed by the company for the electricity used to charge the vehicle. And the company wants to claim back VAT. And we offer that through our reimbursement solution. So truly integrated end-to-end. -end. And now let me talk a bit about the customer surveys we've done. Um, customers have told us they don't like to charge at remote and dark places because after dark they feel unsafe there. So what do we do? We build charge points at manned and well-lit locations like Aral petrol stations, Burger King restaurants, river supermarkets. Our customers would like a food and beverage offer and facilities like toilets, another outcome of this customer survey. And we build charging points at locations with a convenience offer and a toilet. Our customers prefer to ask real people rather than calling an anonymous hotline. So what we do is we train the people who work in the convenience stores at our petrol stations so that they're able to answer questions around the functionality of the chargers. And that differentiates us from those many charge point operators who offer unmanned chargers. And our customers want the most reliable chargers. 
So we are installing the most reliable chargers in the market with more than 99% reliability across our network. Uh, bloggers like the German blogger Blauzahn have measured our reliability compared to the reliability of main competitors. And um, we are the number one in terms of re reliability. They measured Tesla at 98%. They measured uh, others at 90%, one uh, competitor even at 80%. In other words, 20% of all charges of that competitor are out of service at the same time. We've got more than 99% uptime. And we have seen that our retail forecourts, or you might call them petrol stations, which uh, are now being converted into a petrol and charge site, um, are excellent places to charge. I've just explained to what, or what customer needs they address. Um, they have got the additional offers customers want to have. But there are also um, great places which are accessible and everywhere. 90% um, of all people in this country live less than 20 minutes drive away from our petrol stations. And the petrol stations are well known to charging customers because most charging customers were fuel customers in the past. That is where they refueled their car. They know the place, they trust the brand. And I um, already talked about that we offer ultra fast charging only, nothing slower than that. And Talking about that, our customers are willing to pay a premium for a higher charge speed, and that justifies internally that we only invest in high power charging. And um, that applies both to our uh, retail stations and it applies to um, river supermarkets, it applies to um, the Burger King restaurants. I actually have to correct myself. We've got the two pilot locations at River supermarkets where we offer some slower charge speeds. But actually, we've seen that the customer uptake isn't so good. So at the next supermarkets at which we will build chargers, we will deploy high power charging as well, 150 kilowatt or faster, nothing slower than that. And we are getting great uh, feedback on social media. Um, Customers are praising our network reliability and the quality of um, our sites. And uh, something which was really fantastic for my team and, and myself and really made us very proud is that we could read in a German Tesla driver forum online, um, Tesla drivers talking about that they um, prefer charging at our sites. They said, for them as Tesla drivers, it is a bit more expensive to charge at our sites, but the locations are much better. So those guys were writing, we're hardly using Tesla superchargers anymore. We now go to RL Pulse. We've become big fans of RL Pulse. And uh, if you offer a, a product which at first glance is a commodity, before you take into consideration the additional offers around it, um, and that's the commodity electrons. It's fantastic to hear from your customers that they are willing to pay a bit more if they buy that commodity from you rather from the competition because the additional offer around it is much better. So what else could you dream of? And this has made us the number one in public high power charging in Germany. Um, based on, on the number of charge sites we operate. We're a bit, at a bit more than 160 charge sites in the meantime. No one else has uh, so many high power charge sites in Germany. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for your interest. Um, just a note to the organizers. I saw that I got some bonus time. Sorry, I didn't use it up. <laughs> I timed my little presentation such that I would need exactly the time. You're a fast allocation. charger, what shall we say? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was a huge compliment so, at the you. end. Yeah, thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you.
That's a huge compliment because people in a forum are always very honest. So if you get a positive feedback there, everything is fine. They and didn't know we would be reading it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And 350 kilometers in 15 minutes sounds very, very good to me. Yeah. And also from my personal perspective, that's something you got back from the survey as well. Um, people don't want to wait. I yeah. don't want to wait. So it's a very smart move to put the uh, charter sites close to a supermarket and stuff. Thank you very much for that, Alexander. I have a quick look around if there are questions from our audience. We do, we do have, perfect. Hey, good morning. Uh, Toby Vessels from Helm. Uh, just curious, so you talked, if, or actually if we think ahead even further, we know EV is happening. Eventually we have something called AVs, autonomous vehicles happening. I'm curious to hear from you, Alexander, if you're thinking, hey, how could I or my staff, which you have at, at your location, how could we actually help FMCs or fleet owners also charge their autonomous vehicles through our staff. Is this something you have like planned out? Because that's a big problem for autonomous vehicles. Owners, fleet managers, like who the heck is actually charging my vehicle? So is this something you have on the roadmap? Absolutely. So autonomy is the next uh, big step in mobility after electrification. And it's not far away. And we are watching developments very closely, and I will explain in a minute why we're watching them so closely. Actually, autonomy keeps me awake at night, um, more than electrification. Electrification is uh, already a little bit of a game changer for a company which used to be an oil company. Um, but it's welcome and it's wanted, and we are driving it forward because we want to uh, transform from an international oil company to an integrated energy company. Autonomy is, wow, uh, not which we still need to crack. And I will say in a minute why. First, I'm going to answer your question. Don't worry about charging. No problem at all. There's robotic fueling already. And it's being used in mines in Australia, for instance. And on YouTube, you, if you type in the search term robotic fueling, you find um, short video clips of um, robotic fueling, two minute, whatever. If a robot can uh, open the lid on the orifice and uh, put in the nozzle and uh, refuel a vehicle, take out the nozzle, close the lid again, a robot can do the same with um, um, a charger and can charge a vehicle. So uh, such um, technical solutions are being developed at the moment. And when uh, level five autonomy will be available, um, maybe in seven, eight years' time at scale, uh, we will be there from a technical point of view. Now, why is it keeping me awake at night? A significant portion of our uh, P&L comes from convenience stores. But an autonomous vehicle will not bring a person on board when it comes for charging. It would be dead time, so to say. It will rather come for charging uh, on its own, without anybody on board. And then there is nobody who would walk into the convenience store and buy convenience products, which means we will need to reinvent our convenience business. And we have, uh, in fact, piloted the answer to that already um, in the Netherlands. In the city of Utrecht, we had um, uh, an app up and running through which um, customers could order products from the convenience store, and we had uh, people on uh, pedelecs or e-bikes uh, transporting them to the homes of the customers. So just to give you a glimpse, you find a little bit uh, on, uh, about that on the internet. There was a press release at the time and so on. So we are actively preparing for autonomy because we see it coming and we think, uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be the next game changer after electrification. I don't see robots there. I see people there as well. You know, I, I host a lot of events about digitalization. The, the people in the audience are often like, oh, no, I'm scared of it because I lose my job. And I'm like always, no, you don't lose your job. You get another job. It's just job changing, you know? And um, <laughs> so we just need to keep in mind that I think it's just in the past two years something, we have created more jobs than there have been existing in the past yeah. 100 years. So. How cool would that be? It's just an amazing job description. I charge autonomous trucks. I mean, like, I would think that's really cool. Now, to be honest, I see people there as well coming back into that position, but Roberts is a nice idea as well. 
I don't see people charging uh, AVs, but <laughs> you're absolutely right. There will be new jobs, and so far we haven't run out of work. Transformation tends to be difficult, mm -hmm. and it will be more important than ever before that us humans are able to adopt and to learn new stuff and learn a new job, um, even if retirement is just a few years away. It was always important, but it will get more and more important. But uh, yeah, there will be new opportunities when old opportunities disappear, that's for sure. Let's meet again in 10 years. Next question. Let, let's do so. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lukas from Hyundai Europe, and my question is a little bit less futuristic uh, regarding plug and charge. Is it the real plug and charge with the communication between the vehicle and the charger via ISO, I think, 15118, or is it a proprietary solution from Aral where they store the credit card information and they have uh, the connection between the customer account and the payment? So, ISO 1158 and um we, we do it through our partner, Hubject. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Any more questions? Yes. One more question. Thanks, Alexander. This is John Schoenbeck from the BMW Group. Uh, of course, we like to hear that you're building fast charging uh, s and, uh, spots within the cities. Um, the question is, um, can you uh, enable uh, within the current city grids fast charging within the inner cities? Or is that a challenge with regards to the amount of power you need? Um, it is possible. And uh, what you're alluding to is a much broader question, which is, are our power grids fit for the future, fit for millions of fully electric vehicles on the road in Germany? and everybody will come back home from work at 6 p.m. and will want to plug in and charge the vehicle then. And um, if we don't do anything about it, our grids would not be fit. But I'm aware that electricity companies, grid operators, are investing literally billions of euros in making the grids fit for the future. In addition to that, there will be um, further solutions which will support that further. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if very soon we got um, uh, power tariffs again which depend on the time of the day so that you get uh, financially incentivized to charge your vehicle at 3 a.m. rather than at 6 p.m. when everybody comes back from work and plugs in. And of course, uh, you wouldn't need to get up in the middle of the night, then uh, your wall box would have a timer and would do that for you. Um, in addition to that, vehicle to grid is coming. Um, your company is working on it. Uh, other car makers are working on it. So the batteries of vehicles which are plugged in can get used in future to stabilize the network, etc. All that will complement the investments which grid operators are making at the moment. Wonderful. Any further questions? One more. Do you, sorry, do you have any initiatives to run uh, floor charging? For example, you said in the, in the city you have uh, limited space. Why are we not uh, doing on all, each park lot a floor charging device? So what is Aral doing then? I know you're an oil company, you're doing everything with oil, but uh, at the end, uh, this is an easy story, right? I'm coming from a different country, they start with it. Yeah. Hundreds of park lots with floor charging. So, we are coming from being an integrated oil, uh, an international oil company, we are in the transition to becoming an integrated energy company. And in this country, we are not yet seeing that deployed in public. Um, it is an, a truly interesting technology, and I could imagine that we apply it in future as well um, if we see it becoming um, acceptable to the driver, to the public, etc. Uh, but so far, I think um, the German market isn't there for it yet. Okay. Does it make sense to push society there? It's like, kind of? Um, 
it, it will make sense at certain locations. Um, it's not that everywhere where there is limited space it would help, because uh, while charging, the car would need to stand somewhere, and um, that doesn't save a single square meter compared to it standing there being plugged in. Um, yeah. But th there will be applications where th this would make sense, yeah? It will a mixture of everything, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Any further questions from you? No, wonderful. But you're staying with us. That is the good yeah. news for <laughs> about 25 Great. more minutes. So for now, thank you. <laughs>